Hello and welcome. Today's video is going to be about the Storm 32 BGC board. I needed it for the upcoming video for doing head tracking and I ran into some issues trying to program this board through the GUI. I just kept on getting serial errors. So I'm going to show an alternative way to do it through the ST program and um, or the firmware upgrade tool. All right, a little bit of information about the board. The uh, board version is not 1.1, at least the one I got is 1.4 but it's actually 1.3 technically. That's the one you would want to use. It is blue. Uh, it is I2C, so you don't want to use the NT version. And the firmware that it came with wasn't 051, it was 0.8, I believe. So if uh, you could try the GUI first, and if uh, you can do the firmware update normally, that's cool. If not, you'll probably want to use this video. It'll be pretty quick this time. Um, here's the pins again here. I might have said RXTX in a video, but it doesn't really matter because um, it depends which way you look at it, right? This one would be the RXTX, and then this would be TXRX because it's always reverse connect to it. My adapter is not Windows 10 compatible, so I have to use a Windows XP virtual machine. However, that machine doesn't let me do the uh, firmware upgrade, but I did try on a Windows 7 machine anyways. But for this video, I'm going to use a XP virtual machine. If you order an adapter, I would order the CP2102 because it's compatible with the uh, quadcopters and everything too. It's the same chipset, so you're going to know it's going to work with Windows 10 and you don't have to run a virtual machine or find an older system or something like that like I have to do. Right? So I think that's basically all I want all I want to cover and I'll jump into the video now. All right, so here's the board. On the back of it, it actually says it's a version uh, 1.4. Uh, I haven't found any information about this board, but anyways, it's just basically a version 1.3. Uh, the I2C, so you don't want to use the NT firmware because it comes with this guy here. Um, the connections here is the top rail, ground, RX, TX, but it depends what kind of cables you have or whatever. You might have to flip them around. You can also tell what version the board is is by these two rails here, the RC2 and RC. So if it says RC2 first and RC, you most likely have the version 1.3 board. And uh, yeah, the next step too is you'll want to plug this into your computer. And this part, just plug it into a battery bank of some type or even into your computer. But we're not after the USB data, we're just after powering up this board so we can program it. So the next thing you'll want to do is in the uh, software part, I'll just show it here. These two buttons here, reset and boot. You want to push them both down and then just let go of the reset. And don't let go of the boot one at all if you're running into problems like I had. All right, so I'll show you the software now. All right, I'm just in an XP system here quickly. So here's the three files that will come with my package. One is just the hex. That's not the NT one. It's for the I2C. That's the one you'll actually need. But I'll show you how to find out for sure which one you do need anyways. If you want so just unzip this guy here so I'll fast forward this part because once you click on this guy here it takes a long time to run so you're gonna think nothing's happening but just be patient it does pop up sooner or later apparently all right once it's loaded up and you have tried this in a Windows 7 machine or Windows 10 or whatever and you still can't get it to work this is what this video is about. So if you go to Flash Firmware and you look under here, it says version 2.03 NT. So that most likely wouldn't be the version you want. You'll want the uh, version 0.96 because not an NT version. And then here is the um, version number you need for your firmware because there's lots of files in there just in case you get confused. So after you have that, you can go into the firmware files here, this guy. And just confirm it's the right one. So it'd be this guy here. And what I do too is I just copy it out of the folder so you don't get confused using an X program. So you can close this down now now that you have the file. And extract and extract the SD flash loader. So that's the right file there. 
and then install it. Alright, once it's installed, plug in your USB to serial adapter you have. I'm in a virtual machine. I'm just going to make sure it's connected. And it is. Right, so open up flash loader demo. Pick the COM port your USB to serial adapters on. Right, so plug in the USB cable from the storm board to a power bank or into a computer. Now what you want to do is hold the reset button and the boot button at the same time. You're going to have to figure a way where you can still use your mouse to click on the next or get somebody else to help you. So push them both down and then let go just of the reset button and then push the next button and I'm using my left hand next so if you get that just try it again hold them both down let go of the reset and then now you can let go of the uh, boot button once you're here like this the next one you want to push next again confirm it says the same thing as mine push next click this guy here go to your file wherever you extracted my files choose hex file and there's the file there and then double if it's a newer version too if this video is outdated or whatever just make sure it's the newest video the newest file then click on this guy so just make sure now the board is secure and nothing's gonna jar it or anything and the cables come loose then push next all right you can close it so it's good so now you can unplug the USB and you can unplug the uh, serial cables from it and now you can confirm that it worked all right once it's finally loaded up plug in the USB cable directly into the storm board now into your computer Hopefully I don't have to restart it. Alright, so after the driver is installed, pick COM3. You should be able to connect to it. And then just uh, make sure this says OK and OK. And you can go to data display if you want to and push start and now you can move around your I2C connector just to confirm that it's working and that's it guys that's all I'm basically going to cover in this video today hopefully it was helpful if somebody's running into problems upgrading their uh, storm board okay guys thanks for watching bye